Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, this is episode 15, DJ Tech News coming at you. This is Bernardo. Um, on episode 15, I'm going to go over uh, something that someone emailed me and it's basically asking a question, hey, uh, Bernardo, is it possible to get uh, Mac OS virtualized on a PC side? I was like, yeah, somewhat. Uh, in the past, I did this but I actually, you know, got some torrent that was already prepackaged, and um, I uploaded it into VMware. But you know, the, the way the speed and the way that everything is working is really crappy. Uh, that was about two or three years ago. Now I did the research again, and believe it or not, someone out there actually cracked it, and they actually made uh, Apple Mac OS X available when you're creating a, a virtual machine from VMware workstation an option so that's pretty cool so with with this tutorial with this episode I'm going to show you how to do the crack on virtual machine on VMware workstation 8 and as well as install the OS as a matter of fact I'm not going to show you how to install the OS because the reason is because I couldn't find a Mac OS X retail CD so, uh, I have a Mac at home, and I super duper my hard drive, created a DMG file, got a USB hard drive, which is about 32 gigs, took the DMG file, and I just basically re-imaged this USB hard drive um, so I could boot to it. So, I can basically, this is a Snow Leopard operating system, basic all the basic software, nothing crazy like Office or, or Adobe CS5 or any Adobe products, very basic. Um, so I can basically take this USB, plug it into a Mac, hold down the option key while it's booting up, and you're going to see this uh, little disk on your menu. I click on it and I boot to it. So on this episode, I'm going to show you how to crack it. That's why I'm going to put the links and everything in my blog so you guys can check that out. You know, play around with it and hopefully get back to me for those that do have a retail to see how that works. Uh, so let's, let's get to it and uh, episode 15 coming at you again. Uh, if you want to follow the greatest and latest news with BJ Tech News, go visit my blog at bjtechnews.wordpress.com as well follow me at Twitter, Twitter at Twitter BJ Tech News. All right, so let's get started. Okay guys, uh, so what you need for this to work properly. Uh, first of all, I want to show you guys, I'm going to open up uh, VMware Workstation. Okay, uh, let me double click from here and see if I have a folder. Okay, so I do have something in there, so I'm going to delete delete all this stuff in this folder because I'm going to drop it in here. Okay. I just want to show you guys one thing. Uh, the version that I have, this is 8.02. And if I create a new virtual machine now, as you can see, uh, the Apple Mac OS is not part of it, the guest operating system to choose from. We close this. And in my research, I found this link right here, which I will post on my blog as well as um, distribute the installation files. If you guys um, have any issues with finding it, just email me. Uh, go to my blog, go to my blog and go into my, my about or my support contact section and just you know click on the email portion of it and just email and say hey Bernardo hook me up with the files I'm willing to hook you up with the files um, so basically this is what I downloaded this portion right here once I downloaded that portion and, and it unzip it you get this folder right here this folder is broken down into many versions 
as you can see, they have a EX XI version, Linux version, OS X version, and for what we're doing is a Windows version. So you gotta uninstall, uninstall, and then you have this exe file, which is most likely the one that's doing all the uh, all the stuff behind the scenes to make this work. Also, you have the tools, which has a ISO of the Darwin and other files inside the CR SRC folder. So we're going to go to Windows. I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to edit with Notepad++ and then just go over all this stuff. It's really a basic uh, batch command uh, approach. It's really simple. It echoes everything out. This is the person that actually created this script. Uh, two thumbs. Two thumbs for him. Awesome. Uh, the first thing it does, it does an if and else statement, which check is the it checks the processor. If the processor is a 64-bit, it pushes this right here until the registry, register key. If not, it pushes. Uh, if it's not a 64-bit and it's 864-bit, it pushes this to the register key. Now. Um, after that, it does all the tabs in the space between the, the registry, I believe. And it echoes the VMware install at the install path. So most likely the install path would be, it should read like C, programs and files, VMware, there, and where else. Uh, it stops all the services. These are all the services that it stops. Once it stops the services, it actually kills the VMware tray, which is this right here. Kills that. Installs the patch. Packet. Uh, the patch. This is what it uses inside the folder. It uses the Darwin, and it starts everything up. And that's it. So I'm gonna run it. Also, keep in mind when you're running this, you gotta you gotta run it as an administrator. So I'm gonna run it. Again, it's doing all what it needs to do. It found all the reg registry keys that it needed to find. And that's it. It's really simple, really straightforward. Um, so I'm gonna open up VMware again. And I'm gonna create a small little virtual machine. Let me close this up. a small little virtual machine because again like I said before I'm only gonna boot into a USB go next and there you go guys that's the new option uh, the new versions it deals mostly with server stuff and only 10.7 86 or 64 bit I'm gonna do the 10.7 86 86 bit but remember the operating system that I'm working with on the USB is actually Snow Leopard, so it's not a line edition, but it still works. Hit next. Pick the location you where you want to drop your virtual machine file. So I'm putting it on the VM. Play the folder with BJ Mac. Call the name BJ Mac the virtual machine. You can do whatever you want. Hit next. So in this case, because I'm using a external hard drive to boot and read and write, I'm just going to give it one gig. But if you guys were using the retail CD, the minimum gig, the minimum is the minimum size for it would be about 40 gigs. Next, I want to customize the hardware. Make sure you have a USB controller as well with the memory. You want to give the memory a little bit more of, so I'm going to give it about four gigs. If you're able to spare more than four gigs, go for it. Processor, I'm going to give it two processors, two cores. Make sure the virtualized Intel is enabled. Close it. Finish it. Good to go. Now, I'm going to take the USB and I'm going to plug it into my machine. Okay. You heard that sound, that basic that sound, just the indication that I put the USB in. Let me uh, maximize this. Let me close this. So, what you want to do when you start, you want to hold. The Alt key. I think the Alt key and the Option key are in the same key. So 
press the power, make sure that you're in, press on the window side, make sure that you have the alt key pressed down. We're going to see if we can get this to work. Reboot or reset. There it goes. Uh, I want to do the boot manager, but when I when I do this, the USB is not connected to the virtual machine yet, so you have to connect it to the virtual machine. So I basically went here, and you know, I just now I have the. USB connected directly to the uh, boot manager. So if I hit boot manager, you should see my my USB. Hit enter. Give me some time. And it should boot up to uh, the Mac environment uh, using the USB stick. Again, most likely you guys could guys get lucky and you do have a Mac OS X retail CD installation CD uh, you can put the CD inside the CD-ROM drive and just run it that way uh, don't worry about this and know this again if you're if you're doing this you got to give it a lot of memory a lot of CPU power for this to actually work smoothly for you but as you can see, it's like a little hesitant because the USB drive, it's reading and writing to it. Um, because the USB drive is not, if it was a solid state drive, I, I get a whole lot um, performance out of it. Um, but yeah, you could basically do mostly everything that right? you normally have like a Mac. You know, again, I don't have any special programs or anything in it. Everything is really basic. Again, it's really slow because it's reading and writing from a USB drive. So, again, if you guys have a chance, you can actually do it on a solid, solid state drive and get better performance. But other than that, that's it, guys. Hope you like, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, check out my blog and I'll see you guys later.